In this lab, we're going to look at single replacement reactions. So when you look at double replacement reaction, you're usually using two ionic systems that are in solution and you mix them and you see what happens, see if there's an exchange of partners. In a single replacement reaction, it's kind of a similar concept, except in this situation, what we're doing is we're really looking at whether or not a, an individual item, typically a metal, can exchange the metal out of a different ionic system. And then from that, we can determine whether or not metals are more reactive than other metals. So we get into the reactivity series, and that's how we can determine whether or not a single replacement reaction will occur. The purpose of this lab is we're going to run a set of different pairs of metals with salt solutions, and we're going to see in which instances reactions occur. So in which instances we can see which metal is more reactive. So we're going to set up six test tubes. We're going to use these small ones because that'll be a little easier to see. And we're just going to label these one through six. So it's going to quickly label those so we can track what we're doing. Then what we're going to do is into each of these tubes, we're going to set up a small strip of metal. You can see them to the left of the test tubes there on the bench. And then we're going to add uh, a decent quantity, probably about five mils of each of the solutions you see in the background. And we're going to look at specific pairs in order to figure this out. So in the first test tube, we're going to add a copper strip. Into the second test tube, we're going to add our lead strip. Into our third one, we're going to put a zinc strip. And just so you know, the ends of these I've already kind of buffed out and polished up a little bit just to make sure they're nice and clean so that if a reaction does occur, it occurs very readily. You can see, for example, like on the end of this, if you look at the end of this copper strip, it is pretty shiny. So we've already buffed that out. We're going to put a zinc strip in number four. So that one's a little longer. It doesn't really matter. We're really going to be looking at the reactions down here in the lower third. And then we're going to put a copper strip in the fifth one. And I need one more zinc strip. There's a zinc strip that's already nice and shiny on the end, so we're just going to add that one in the last one. So let's move that copper strip out of the way. So we've got a copper strip in the first one, a lead strip in the second one, a zinc strip in the third and the fourth, copper in the fifth, and a zinc in the sixth. So there's our metals inside. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add the solutions to the requisite vials. In the first vial where we have a copper strip, we're going to use silver nitrate. And all we're going to do here is we are going to add about a half a test tube full of the liquid. So it'll be like a couple of pipettes of this liquid going in there. So we're just going to do that really quickly. And then we're going to see if there's any obvious reaction there. So there's the silver nitrate and the copper metal. And if you look carefully, you can see that copper metal is not clean anymore, right? You can see like it's looking very dirty. Look at the above the liquid. See how shiny that copper metal is and look below the surface of the liquid. And you can see what's going on there. So clearly there's something happening there. We're going to let that go for a little while and we'll come back and take a secondary look at that in a moment. But obviously at first glance, it looks like something is going on there. In the second one where we have the lead strip, we're going to add the copper two nitrate. So we have our lead strip in there. We're going to add the copper two nitrate to it. We're going to do the same as we did before. Just going to fill it about halfway with this material. And we can watch and see if anything happens to that. So far, still looking somewhat shiny in there. So it doesn't look like initially anything substantial happened. In this third test tube here, we, we have the zinc strip. We're going to add lead nitrate to it. So here's our lead nitrate. We 
and we can see if anything will happen here when we add the lead and nitrate. So it's a fairly shiny piece at the bottom. It's a little bit dirty on top, but the bottom we can look at quite quite clearly. See this nicely cleaned. We'll add just a little bit more to that. Then we'll take a look. And so if you just take a look at that. Seems to be some little bubbles on the surface there. We'll see if that comes to anything else. We'll see if that changes color. It does look, you look at that carefully, look at the below the liquid level, see how it looks very much darker, and above how it looks a lot lighter. So that should tell you that there's probably something going on in this vessel. But we'll come back in about 10 minutes and take a look at this. And then in the fourth one, we have the zinc strip. We're going to have the magnesium sulfate to this. If you haven't already noticed, I am wearing gloves. The reason being, there are some chemicals here that are corrosive or toxic. In fact, just about all of them are. The magnesium sulfate is really not that dangerous. But, you know, 3M sulfuric acid can definitely cause burns. Copper nitrate is definitely toxic and can be corrosive. Lead nitrate is definitely toxic. Silver nitrate is toxic and also can leave some pretty nice looking stains on your hands. So on the whole, gloves 100% the course of action here. And if you're ever unsure, gloves are definitely the way to go, right? Safe than sorry, I believe is the phrase. So we have the zinc strip in here. We're going to add some magnesium sulfate to this. And we'll see if anything happens. So we'll just put a little bit in there at first. See if we can see anything happening. We'll add just a little bit more. And then we'll take a look. So, first glance doesn't look to be particularly reactive. We'll let that go for a little bit. In the fifth one, we have co the copper strip. And we're going to add 3M sulfuric acid to that one. And just like before, we're going to about half fill this with the 3M sulfuric acid. And we'll see if we can see anything happening at the same time. It looks nice and shiny underneath. We'll bring that into shot so you can see if anything's going on. Still looks pretty shiny underneath, not seeing any real effervescence of any kind in there. So we're going to let that go for a little while. And in the last one where we have another piece of zinc, we're going to add the sulfuric acid to that one as well. So we've got a nice shiny piece at the bottom here. As you can see, immediately something is happening. You should be able to make observation as to what you see. Since you're not here in the lab running this, I'm going to tell you that so far that doesn't feel particularly hot, but we're going to let that go. But as you can see, there's clearly something going on in there, and you should make your observations as to what you see. So we're going to try to zoom in a little bit on this so you can look at the set together. So one through six are labeled. And you may not be able to hear that, but maybe you can hear the the noise of that effervescence right there. So we're going to leave those test tubes there for you to look at and think about what's going on. If you see anything happening, we'll come back in about 10 minutes and we'll carry on right from here. All right, so these have been sitting here now for about 10 minutes. You can probably see some 
significant changes in some of them and maybe not so much in others. And so I'm not going to tell you exactly what to write or anything like that. What I want you to do is look at it and make your observations to what you see. And when you look at this, this was a piece of copper in there and we added some silver nitrate to it. When you look at it, what do you see in terms of the piece of copper? Maybe what's happened to it, around it? What color is the supernatant liquid? Is that still the same color it was at the beginning? You know, you can get to say whether or not it's clear, say whether or not it has a certain color. These are the kinds of observations you're looking for. Did a solid form? If it did, what kind of color is the solid? What was the metal originally? What does it look like now? So I'm throwing a lot of stuff out there, but I'm trying to give you some ideas of how you should describe what you're looking at when you're dealing with chemical systems. So color of the liquid, color of the solids, if solids are formed or not. So in the second one, we had a lead strip in a copper sulfate system. And so as we look at this one, you know, what do you see now? This that piece of copper in there. It's a little bit difficult to see because the, the system is a little murky. But if you think something has happened, you should probably write down what you see in there. Give it a little shake. Maybe that'll make things a little more clear or not as the case may be. All right, in the third one where we had that zinc strip and the lead nitrate, this one's kind of cool looking. You can look, you can see the, the supernatant liquid. You can look at that strip of lead and, uh, sorry, a strip of zinc in the middle there. If I give it a little shake, there you go, that'll help maybe have you think about what's really happening in there. Do you think you see a solid formed? If you do, what color is it? What happened to the original zinc metal strip? If you have to describe the zinc metal strip at the beginning and the end, how would you do that? In the fourth test tube here, we have the zinc strip with magnesium sulfate. And you can make your observations. If you think something's happened, explain what you see, what you think you see has happened. If not, you can say there's no reaction or there was no change in the system. That's how you would know it if you think there's nothing happening. In system number five, where we had the copper strip and the sulfuric acid. So the 3M sulfuric acid and the copper strip. So again, describe the metal, describe if you see any solids, the color and the clarity of the supernatant liquid. And finally, number six, that has been quite busily, clearly doing something the whole time. You can see all those bubbles being generated. It's very clear. And if I just touch it, that's a pretty hot system. Not very, not super, super hot, but definitely getting up there. So one of the observations you can make is whether or not there's a change in temperature. Number six is the only one where I can categorically say it felt much warmer than room temperature. All right, so now you can make observations as to what happened in each of those systems, if there was a reaction or not, and what the observations were. And from that, you should be able to determine what the reactivity sequence is for the metals that we're looking at here, silver, copper, lead, and magnesium. And of course, the sulfuric acid represents hydrogen which we also typically include in that reactivity series. The full name of that series is usually the reactivity series of metals and hydrogen. It's often forgotten, we just call it the reactivity series. So hydrogen is in there, so when we use sulfuric acid, we're really considering that as a source of hydrogen ion. All right, and at this point, you should be able to finish the rest of your lab.